GoPro School. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the GoPro Hero 9. Although we will be using the Hero 9 Black, earlier and later models will still have most of the same features. We will cover the following topics. 1. Unboxing. We will show you what comes with the GoPro Hero 9 Black and the additional items you may need. 2. Tour. We will take a close look at the GoPro body. 3. Removing and replacing the protective lens. 4. Inserting the memory card and battery. 5. Charging the battery in the GoPro. 6. Initial camera setup and updates using the app. We will show you how to get your GoPro up and running. 7. Modes. We will show you the three different modes the GoPro can run in. 8. Best settings, preferences, and test footage. We will go over the menu settings and preferences, recommend our favorite settings, and show you test footage examples of these settings in use. 9. How to get your GoPro footage onto your computer. 10. Accessories. We show you some great accessories that will give you an idea of how you can mount your GoPro camera to get the most out of it. I'll leave links to everything I talk about in the description below this video if you want to check them out. Let's get started. Unboxing. The GoPro Hero 9 comes with quite a bit of stuff to get you started. These items include a camera case, which has some room to grow, the Hero 9 black camera of course, a rechargeable battery, a curved adhesive mount, a thumb screw and a mounting buckle, a USB-C cable, and some stickers and various papers. In addition, I purchased a SanDisk 256GB Extreme Micro SD card. I wanted to buy a fast and reliable card that was big enough to capture a lot of stills and video. It comes with an adapter that lets you use it in an SDXC slot if your computer has one. I also purchased a GoPro dual battery charger that comes with an additional battery and a USB-C cable. You can charge two batteries with it at the same time, connected to a computer, or with an optional USB wall charger, you can connect it to an electrical outlet. When I am on the go, I'll even connect the charger to a USB power bank. That usually keeps me shooting all day with just two batteries. When the light is amber on the charger, the battery is charging. When the light is green, it's fully charged and ready to go. The batteries take around three hours or less to charge depending on how drained they are. A fully charged battery lasts a little over two hours depending on how you're using the camera. Two, tour. Let's take a quick tour of the camera so you get to know the camera's body. On the back of the GoPro 9, you'll see the touch screen. We'll go over all of the menus and settings a little later. On the top left of the back of the camera is a status light. On the side of the camera, you'll see the door and latch that protect and hold the SD card and the battery. On the other side of the camera is the power mode button, which I'll explain a little more in detail later. Below that is a microphone drain. Do not try to open it. It's not a door or a latch. It's for using your camera in the water. The GoPro is waterproof up to 33 feet, by the way, which is awesome. If you go any deeper, you will need to purchase some underwater housing for it to prevent damage. On the top of the camera is a shutter button. You will also see a microphone. On the bottom of the GoPro are folding fingers for mounting the GoPro, which we will go over a little later. Under the folding fingers is a speaker, so when you're reviewing your footage you can hear the sound. On the front of the Hero 9 is the front screen, which makes the camera good for selfies. Above the screen is another status light. On the bottom right side is another microphone. There are two microphones on this camera. Three, removing and replacing the protective lens. Above the microphone is a removable protective lens. It protects the 5K 20 megapixel camera. To remove it, pull the lens protector away from the camera a slight bit while turning it counterclockwise and it will be released from the camera. Now you can replace it if it's damaged or exchange it with an ND filter or a lens mod sold separately. Putting it back on is easy. Just push it toward the camera while turning it clockwise until it locks into place. 4. Inserting the memory card and battery. 
Before you can use the camera, you'll need to insert the memory card and battery. First, locate the door on the side of the camera. Using your finger, push the latch up and then pull the door open. It may be a little hard to open the latch the first few times, but it will get easier. Then, insert the SD card into the card slot with the label facing the battery compartment. I like to push it into place using my thumb and forefinger. Then I use my thumbnail to insert it in the rest of the way. To remove the micro SD card, simply push the card in to eject it with your thumbnail. Then use your thumb and forefinger to pull it out. Let's put it back in. Next, we will insert the battery as shown. Notice the little battery pins or connectors on the bottom of the battery. They line up accordingly with the inside of the battery compartment. Don't worry, they'll only go in one way. 5. Charging the battery in the GoPro To charge the battery in the GoPro, use the included USB-C cable to connect your GoPro to a computer. When the red status light is on, the battery is charging. When it goes out, the battery is charged. The battery takes around three hours or less to charge, depending how drained it is. After charging is complete, remove the cable and make sure you close the door securely. The latch must click into place to make your GoPro waterproof up to 33 feet. Six, initial camera setup and updates with the app. Now that the battery is fully charged, let's set up the camera for the first time. I'll press and hold the power mode button on the side of the camera for a few seconds to turn it on. By touching the screen, you will be asked to choose your language. Agree to the legal stuff and turn on GPS. Then, to finish setup, you should download and install the GoPro app on your smartphone. The app is now called Quick and I found it on the App Store for my iPhone and installed it. I opened the app and gave it all the needed permissions for photos and network. Then I tapped, yep, I have a GoPro. Then I hit, pair my GoPro. I allowed Bluetooth use. Then I tapped, connect your GoPro. The app searched and found my GoPro. Then I tapped, connect camera. Next, I selected Pair. On the next screen, I could change the name of my GoPro, but I left it as is and tapped Save New Name. The app showed that I needed to update the GoPro, so I tapped Update Camera. Then I tapped Update and accepted the legal disclaimer. I then tapped Join the app transferred files to the camera and then installed the latest update. When I got to the All Set screen, I tapped Done. Then I tapped Let's Go. At the Control Your GoPro from your phone screen, I tapped Try It. Then I tapped Enable Preview, Continue, and Join. Not only was my camera updated, but I could see a preview of my GoPro camera on my phone, plus GoPro controls. It's a very easy app to use. Now let's move on to operating the GoPro without using the app. Formatting your memory card. Before you can start capturing content, you will need to format your memory card. Swipe down on the back screen, then swipe right. Select Preferences. Then scroll down to Reset and tap it. Then select Format SD Card. Press Format and your card will be formatted and ready to use. Navigate back using the back arrows two times. Then swipe up to get back to what I like to call the home screen. Capturing photos and recording time lapse or videos. Before we go any further, this is just a simple note that anytime you want to take a photo or start or stop recording time lapse or video, press the shutter button on top of the camera. 
playing back media on your GoPro. To review pictures or video, simply swipe up on the screen and your last video recorded will begin playing. Tap in the middle of the screen to pause the video. The checkerboard looking icon lets you look at thumbnails of your recorded media. There's a sound on or mute speaker icon that you can tap. There's also a scroll back and forth through a clip button with a slider control. In addition, there's a trash icon for deleting clips. There's also a playback speed button which allows you to view your shot in real speed or in slow motion. There's a highlight button to tag a favorite moment. Swipe down to get back to the home screen. Now that that's out of the way, let's explore some settings and how to navigate through the GoPro menus. 7. The three modes. Remember, if you press and hold the power mode button on the side of the camera for a few seconds, it will turn the camera on and off. But this button also has a second use. If you press the mode button on the side of the camera quickly, you can cycle through the three modes on the camera. They are photo, time lapse, and video. You can also cycle through the modes by simply swiping your finger across the screen, left or right. Let's go through each mode now. Photo mode. You'll notice the little photo camera icon on the top middle part of the screen, indicating that we are in photo mode. To the left of that, we have an indicator that tells us how many pictures we can take based on our current photo settings and the size of our memory card. Because our card is big, we are at 999 plus photos remaining. On the far right side of the screen, we see our battery indicator is at 66%. The other buttons on screen, which are called on-screen shortcuts, will change as we go through the different modes. Output Shortcut The first button on the middle right is Output. If I tap it, you will see we are in Standard Mode. We can slide to HDR, Super Photo, or RAW. Let me explain each. Standard saves your photos as standard JPEG files. JPEGs don't take up a lot of space and they are easy to share, but the look of the photo is baked in for the most part. HDR takes and combines multiple photos in a single shot and brings out the details in both the bright and dark areas of the image. Use this setting if you like that look. Good for shots with extreme lighting. Superphoto analyzes the scene and intelligently applies the best image processing for the shot. This is a good setting to use if you want GoPro to do the thinking for you. The drawback is that it may take longer for the camera to process each shot. My favorite output setting is RAW. RAW saves each photo as a JPEG and a .gpr GoPro RAW file, which gives you the ability to tweak an image in a program like Adobe Photoshop. If you don't want to edit your photos after you take them, don't use RAW. But if you are familiar with an app that can take advantage of RAW, shoot in RAW and you will have a lot of control over your picture. You can tweak settings later on your computer like exposure, color balance, sharpening, noise reduction, and a whole lot more. RAW is very powerful if you know how to use it. Touch Zoom Shortcut the next button on the screen is a magnifying glass with a plus in the middle of it. If you tap it, you can zoom into your image up to 2x. It's not an optical zoom, it's a digital zoom, so I usually don't do this. If I want to get closer to something, I just move closer to it if possible. That gives me the highest quality image. Digital Lenses Shortcut The next button has a W in it. This is the Digital Lenses Shortcut. Different digital lenses affect cropping, field of view, and the fisheye effect. Let's go through each one. W stands for wide. Notice how the shot is very wide, but it has a fisheye look. 
The dresser in the shot is curved, even though it's not really curved in reality. L stands for linear. Notice how the shot is tighter and the dresser is no longer curved. It's straight like it is in reality. It's a more natural look. N stands for narrow. With the narrow digital lens, our shot is even tighter. It's a creative choice as to which digital zoom you want to use. I often use wide when I'm shooting action and linear when I am shooting beauty shots. Delay timer shortcut. The next button with the stopwatch icon is the delay timer. You can select off, three seconds, or 10 seconds. If I set it to three seconds and press the shutter button, the picture won't be taken until three seconds has passed. Good for selfies or group shots that you want to be a part of. Photo presets. The big black button that says photo wide is a preset button. If I tap it, I can select from the different photo presets. Let's go through each one of them. Photo, that's the mode we've currently been in. If you press the shutter button on top of the camera, you can take a single photo. If you press and hold the shutter button, you can take continuous photos at a rate of up to 30 per second. Good for capturing action. Next, we have Live Burst, which captures a burst of photos, 1.5 seconds before and 1.5 seconds after you press the shutter button. That's right, if you are a little late pressing the shutter button, the camera may have caught the moment that you missed as long as it happened 1.5 seconds before you press the shutter button. Burst. Burst mode is for capturing fast action. Press the shutter in this mode and you will take up to 25 photos in one second. This is great for capturing fast motion. And then we have night photo, which allows for slow shutter speeds when you are shooting in low light. For example, I use night photo to shoot this shot that was lit with just a single candle. To keep the image from getting blurry, use a tripod or set the camera down on something. It should not move. If you tried to shoot this shot in any other mode, the image would be very grainy and quite possibly much darker. Video mode. If we swipe our screen left, we switch from photo to video mode. You'll notice the little video camera icon at the top middle of the screen. We have the battery life indicator on the top right and the indicator that tells us how much record time we have left based on our current video settings on the top left. And of course, if we press the shutter button on the top of the camera, we will start recording video. Video on-screen shortcuts. Digital lenses shortcut. Like in the photo mode, we have the digital lenses shortcut button. If we press it, we get the following options. Super view, which is very wide and the edges of the image are quite curved. It's a classic GoPro look. Then wide, which is a little less wide and a little less curved. After that, we have linear, that is tighter and has no curvature. Then we have linear horizon leveling. When this is selected, the GoPro tries to keep the horizon in the shot level, even if you are not holding the camera level. It does a really good job as you can see. Then we have narrow, which is a much tighter digital lens. I'll set it back to wide. Slow-mo shortcut. You'll notice a shortcut button with an 8x on it. This is the slow-mo shortcut. 8x refers to 240 frames per second slow motion. Next we have 4x, which is 120 frames per second slow motion. 2x is 60 frames per second slow motion. Then we have 1x30, which is 30 frames per second normal speed. Finally, we have 1x 24 frames per second normal speed. So why can normal speed be 24 or 30 frames per second? It's a creative choice. 24 frames per second is the frame rate that movies are shot at. Therefore, it's cinematic looking. 30 frames per second has less of a traditional film look to it, but it may be a little smoother at capturing fast moving action. Some people can't tell the difference. The choice is yours. 
touch zoom shortcut. We have our touch zoom shortcut. If we want a digital zoom in from 1x to 2x. Hyper smooth shortcut. Hyper smooth is our next shortcut. This is a way to quickly turn image stabilization on and off. When hyper smooth boost is on, the image from the GoPro is similar to using a gimbal. Camera shake is drastically reduced, nearly eliminated at times. The only negative is that it does crop the image a bit when it's on, but I think it's worth using if you're not using a tripod and doing a lot of movement. Hyper smooth examples. Here's a shot with no hyper smooth. You can see it's not very steady. Here's a shot with hyper smooth 3.0 on. It's certainly better. And finally, here's a shot with hyper smooth boost, the strongest stabilization setting. It's pretty impressive in my opinion. Modifying on screen shortcuts. By the way, we can change the on-screen shortcuts if we want to by pressing and holding one of them until a slider comes up. The slider allows you to switch to a different shortcut. The upper right shortcut button doesn't have to be hyper smooth boost for example. You can change it to anything that you please. Video presets. Next, let's tap the big black button to go into video presets. There are multiple options here. The first one is standard. This is an all-purpose video mode for shooting 1080p at 60 frames per second. The digital lens is set to wide. Activity. Use this preset to capture activities. It's 2.7K resolution at 60 frames per second. The digital lens is set to super view, so it has a very fisheye look. Cinematic. This mode captures 4K video with a linear plus horizon leveling digital lens. It doesn't have that over-the-top fisheye lens look. It's very film-like. And slow-mo. This mode is great for capturing fast action shots in 1080p at 240 frames per second. There's a plus button under the existing presets where you can create your own preset. 8. Best Settings, Preferences, and Test Footage Modifying a Video Preset You can modify the existing presets by tapping on the pencil next to the preset's name. I definitely suggest doing this so that you can capture the best image that you can from your GoPro. Let's select Cinematic for example. The first thing we can change is Res FPS, which means resolution and frames per second. Let's change this cinematic preset's resolution from 4K to 5K, which is the highest resolution that this camera records. Then, let's change the frame rate to 24 frames per second. That's the frame rate that Hollywood shoots in. Now, let's navigate back using the back arrow at the top. Next, let's change the sharpness by selecting it. It's set to high. The other options are medium and low. In my opinion, I think that GoPro images are too sharp on high, almost in an artificial way. So let's change it to low. You may prefer medium. It's up to you. Let's go back and then scroll down to bitrate. The preset is at standard. In my opinion, you should never shoot with a bitrate at standard. Change it to high to get the best quality image. In fact, I would change that on every preset that this camera offers. Let's go to ISO Max. I like to lower this to 800. It forces the camera to not go to a higher ISO. 1600 ISO, in my opinion, is noisy. I don't like to have to use it unless I have no choice. Next, let's change EV Comp. This is where you can change how your GoPro automatically exposes your footage. You can make it brighter or darker. I'll set it to minus 0.5 because I think that the GoPro always overexposes the image a little too much. In fact, I often set this to minus 1. It's up to you. Next, let's change color. I like to use flat so that my video is not overly saturated or too contrasty. If I need to adjust things, like color and contrast, 
I'll do it while I'm editing my footage after it's been shot, not bake it into the file. If you don't plan on color correcting your footage later, you could leave this setting on GoPro, and the high saturation, high contrast GoPro look will be baked in your footage. That's all the modifications I will make in the cinematic preset. If you end up hating your modified preset, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and tap Restore, and the default settings will reset to the way they were before we made the modifications. Test footage. Let me show you some footage examples at various resolutions and frame rates. This chart shows my favorite resolutions to shoot in. Generally, you want to shoot in the highest resolution possible. However, not all frame rates are available in each resolution. So if you want to record a high frame rate slow motion shot, for example, you may need to shoot at a lower resolution to achieve it. Let's look at some test footage. Here's a 5K 24 frames per second example, scaled down to 4K. 4K is the resolution that this entire video is in. Here's a 5K 30 frames per second example, also scaled down to 4K. Here's a 4K 60 frames per second example. Here's a 4K 60 frames per second example in slow motion. Here's a 2.7K 120 frames per second slow motion example, scaled up to 4K. Here's a 1080 240 frames per second slow motion example, also scaled up to 4K. Here's a 4K 60 frames per second slow motion example going into water. I must say, I'm pretty impressed with the footage coming out of this GoPro. Here's a tip. The sensor on the GoPro is pretty small, so to get the best out of your camera, shoot in a lot of light. Darker images sometimes become noisy. Additional settings. There's a few other settings I want to show you. Hindsight. Hindsight can be turned off, set to 15 seconds or 30 seconds. Basically, it records videos for those sets of times before you press the shutter button to begin recording video. It's meant to capture video that you may have missed by pressing the shutter button too late. If that happens to you a lot, you may want to turn this feature on. Shutter. Shutter is the next setting. I leave it on auto most of the time, but you can set it as high as 1 20th of a second. Shutter speed has to do with motion blur in your image. If shutter speed is too low, movement in your shot will be blurry. If it's set too high, motion blur is greatly reduced, which can look unnatural. The rule for proper motion blur is to set your shutter speed to twice the frame rate. So if I'm shooting 24 frames per second, a good shutter speed would be 1 48th of a second. But with GoPro footage, I personally don't mind high shutter speeds, so I leave this on auto most of the time. You may disagree. I will say that if you want to shoot in slower shutter speeds outdoors, you will need to purchase ND filters. ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. White balance. Next we have white balance. It goes as high as 6500 degrees Kelvin and as low as 2300 degrees Kelvin. It's a setting that coincides with the color of different light sources. Daylight is often very cool or blue to our camera, and candlelight is very warm or orange to our camera. If I'm shooting during the day in sunlight, I set my white balance to 5500 degrees Kelvin for a very natural look with good color rendition. If you're shooting under a different lighting source or multiple lighting sources, and you don't know what color temperature to set your camera to, you may want to leave this setting on auto. You could also eyeball it using the information on this chart as a starting point. This chart includes many different light sources and their respective color temperatures. You can manually dial in these settings on your GoPro. Raw audio. The next setting I want to discuss is raw audio. When raw audio is set to high, the camera records a separate high quality and highly processed audio wave file. The medium setting is similar, but with less processing. The low setting is similar, but with even less processing. If you want to use this extra high quality audio file, 
you will need to sync it up in an editing program like Adobe Premiere Pro. If you don't want to bother with that, you can just use the audio that's married to your video clip. Set raw audio to off in that case. Here's an example of raw audio high. This is raw audio high. This is raw audio high. And here's an example of raw audio off. This is raw audio off. This is raw audio off. Wind reduction. Wind reduction is our next setting. The available settings are auto, on, and off. I usually leave this in auto. It's not perfect, but it does help your audio sound better when it's windy outside. Here's a quick test I recorded in front of a fan. This is with wind reduction off. This is wind reduction set to off. This is wind reduction set to off. This is with wind reduction on. This is wind reduction set to on. Exposure control. Sometimes your GoPro doesn't do a good job with exposure. This can often happen when shooting a scene with extreme bright and dark areas. You can show the GoPro what to expose for and lock the exposure if you wish using exposure control. Tap and hold the middle part of the screen until the spot meter appears. Basically, your GoPro will expose for whatever that spot meter box is over. So if we want to expose for the bright window in our shot, drag the spot meter over it. If we want to expose for the figurines on the shelf, drag the spot meter over them. If you want to lock the exposure, simply tap and hold on the spot meter box and a lock will appear. Press the checkbox to go back to the home screen and then you can record like normal. To unlock the exposure, just press and hold the middle of the screen. The spot meter will return, but it won't be locked. Press the X to exit exposure control. Time lapse mode. Let's swipe our screen to the right to get into time lapse mode. You can see the stopwatch icon in the upper middle part of the screen indicating that we are in time lapse mode. To the right of that, we have our battery power indicator. On the opposite side, we have our remaining capture time, determined by our current settings and the size of our micro SD card. Digital lens is shortcut. Like in the video and photo modes, we have the W icon, which is the digital lens is shortcut. It's currently on wide, hence the W. Touch zoom shortcut. If we want to digitally zoom into our shot, we can go from 1x to 2x. Time lapse presets. The large button is a time lapse preset. Let's tap it to see all the time lapse presets. There are three. First, we have time warp. Time warp allows you to record incredibly stabilized time lapse videos while you move the camera. This example shows what I'm talking about. Next, we have time lapse. Time lapse is the technique of taking a sequence of images at set intervals to record changes that usually take place slowly over time. Then those frames are played back in succession, and the scene that is normally slow in reality is sped up and happens in a much shorter time. Think of dramatic clouds flying through the sky, for example. We also have night lapse, which is time lapse taken in low light. It allows the camera to go into slow shutter speeds to capture objects like moving stars. If we scroll down, we see the plus symbol if we want to create our own custom time lapse preset. Time lapse settings. Let's adjust and explain some of the time lapse settings. First, I'm going to adjust the resolution. I'm going to switch to 4K because it's a higher resolution than 1080. Next, let's go to Format. You can either select Time Lapse Video or Time Lapse Photo. Let's break down these two options. Time Lapse Video simply records your time lapse and puts it into one video file. It's the easiest of the two formats to use. 
time-lapse photo is different. Instead of recording your time-lapse to one video file, it records each frame as an individual photo. So instead of a single video clip, you might end up with hundreds of photos. You will have to deal with these photos later using a computer and editing software. I'll demonstrate this later. For the highest quality but most labor-intensive time-lapses, I suggest shooting in time-lapse photo mode and set your output setting to RAW. Remember, RAW is powerful because it gives you a lot of control over your image after it's been shot. Interval. The next setting I want to discuss is interval. Interval refers to how often your camera takes a photo when shooting time-lapse. It goes from 0.5 seconds to 60 minutes and many intervals in between. Here's a chart with some interval suggestions. These are only suggestions. Feel free to experiment. Time-lapse is beautiful to look at, but time-consuming to shoot because it takes a lot of frames shot over extended periods of time to make a substantial time-lapse shot. Duration. The next setting is duration. You can record with no time limit, and the camera just records time lapse until the media card is filled up or until the battery dies, or you can pick a limit up to three hours. Scheduled Capture. With Scheduled Capture, you can set a time for your GoPro to start recording a time lapse in the future. After you set a time, you can turn off your camera and the GoPro will turn on and begin recording at the time you set, which is a great feature. It saves battery life and lets the GoPro do the work while you can be doing something else. You can cancel the scheduled capture by just turning it off. Bitrate. As always, I'll set my bitrate to high for the best quality recording. EV Comp. I'll bring EV Comp down to minus one so that my image is not overexposed. When set to its default setting, the GoPro tends to overexpose in my opinion. Test it out for yourself. Sometimes minus 0.5 is enough. Sharpness. I'll bring sharpness down to medium. High is just too much for my taste. Some people even prefer low. ISO Max. I'll bring this down to 800. Above that, the image gets too noisy in my opinion. Color. I'll change color to flat because I'll add color and contrast later if need be in my editing software. If you don't want to deal with color correction later, you can leave this set to GoPro Color. It's up to you. Time Warp Settings. Let's just go over a few settings in the Time Warp preset. Resolution. I'll change the resolution from 1080 to 4K because I like having the highest resolution possible. Speed. Next is speed. You can set it to auto and GoPro picks the desired speed. Or you can set it to a specific value from 2x all the way up to 30x. The faster the speed, the faster the time warp looks played back. So for short activities, use a lower speed. For long activities, use a higher speed. EV Comp. Like I usually do, I'll bring EV Comp down to minus one so that my image is not overexposed, like the GoPro tends to do. Sharpness. I'll bring sharpness down to medium. High is just too much for my taste. Some people even prefer low. ISO Max. I'll bring ISO Max down to 800. Above that, the image gets too noisy in my opinion. Color. I'll change color to flat because I'll add color and contrast later if need be in my editing software. If you don't want to deal with color correction later, you could leave this set to GoPro Color. It's up to you. White Balance. I'll set white balance to 5500K if I'm shooting outdoors in sunlight. I'll leave it to auto if I'm shooting in other circumstances where I don't know the color temperature of my lighting sources. 
Zoom. I'll keep my zoom set to 1x. No reason to digitally zoom in. It lowers the video quality. I could do it later and edit if need be. If you're not editing your GoPro clips, feel free to zoom in. Night lapse settings. Let's take a look at some night lapse preset settings and adjust them as needed by tapping the pencil icon. Resolution. First, I'm going to adjust the resolution. I'm going to switch to 4K because it's a higher resolution than 1080. Format. Next, I'll adjust the format to photo and set your output setting to raw. Night interval. Night interval can be set to auto if you want your GoPro to decide how often you want it to take a time-lapse photo. If you want to control this setting, you can go as long as 60 minutes or as often as every 5 seconds or something in between. If I'm shooting stars or night landscapes, I usually go with a night interval of 30 seconds. Bitrate. For the best quality, I always change bitrate to high. White balance. As far as setting white balance for shooting at night, you can change it to 5500 for a natural look, or you can cool it down to 3200 if you want a very blue look when shooting stars or landscapes at night. It's a creative choice. You can also just leave it on auto if you want your GoPro to make the decision. Color. As I usually do, I'll set color to flat. If you prefer a more saturated, high contrast look, go with GoPro. Sharpness. I'll turn sharpness down to medium for a more natural look. Some people even prefer low. Now I'm happy with this preset. Let's move on. Time-lapse photo workflow using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I'll show you how to turn your raw GoPro individual photos into time-lapse videos using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. After moving your GoPro footage onto your computer, in Adobe Photoshop, open all of the .gpr GoPro RAW files that are part of your time-lapse. You do this by selecting all of them and then click Open. Photoshop opens all of the images in Camera RAW. In the film strip, select one of the files and then press Command and A at the same time. This selects all the raw images at once, so the changes you make to one are repeated on all of the other raw photos. Then adjust the raw settings to make the image look the best that it can. I will raise my shadows so that the trees have more detail. I'll also add a little more color using the saturation control. I'm going to bring up my exposure a little bit. Then I'll bring my highlights down a tad to preserve details in the clouds. Finally, when I'm happy with my tweaks, I'll click Save Images. This brings up Save Options. Now that our raw photos look good, we are going to turn them into high quality JPEGs so that we can bring them into Adobe Premiere Pro. Under Destination, I'll click on Select Folder, and then I'll create a new folder on my computer's hard drive where I want my new JPEGs to be saved. Then I'll click Select. Next, under Format, I'll make sure that we are set to JPEG and that our quality is set to the highest level, 12. Then I'll press Save. Camera Raw will create JPEGs from our tweaked RAW files. When that process is done, open Adobe Premiere Pro. Create a sequence that is UHD with a frame rate of 23.976. Then, in an empty bin, right click and choose Import. Next, navigate to the folder that has your new JPEGs in it. Make sure that the JPEGs are in sequential order. I'll select the first one, the lowest number, then I'll click Options, and make sure that Image Sequence is checked. Next, I'll click Import. Premiere Pro puts all those individual files into one clip. 
I'll drag and drop the time-lapse clip onto my timeline. Because the resolution of the time-lapse clip is higher than UHD, I can go into the Effects tab and scale it down. This is great for reframing and doing moves like zooming in. Finally, I'll render the time-lapse clip on the timeline and play it back. It looks great. Feel free to export it any way you please. The Dashboard Back to our GoPro. No matter what mode you are in, you can swipe down on the rear screen to display the dashboard. This screen gives us several things that we can change on our GoPro. Let's go over each one. Voice control. The first icon and picture of a head is for voice control. If we click it and it turns blue, voice control is turned on. Pick the language that you want to use, then swipe up to get out of the dashboard. Now we can say things like, GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, take a picture. If we swipe down on the screen, then swipe right, select Preferences, then select Voice Control, we can tap Wake on Voice, then turn it on, and then we can turn our GoPro on and off using our voice. GoPro, turn off. GoPro, turn on. If we swipe down on the screen again, then swipe right, then select Preferences, then select Voice Control, we can scroll down to the bottom of the list and tap Commands. This shows you a list of all of the voice commands you can use with your GoPro. Very handy. Camera Beeps. The next item on the dashboard is a musical note. This simply turns the camera's beep sounds on and off. Quick Capture. Quick Capture is next. It's the rabbit icon. When enabled, when your GoPro is turned off, you can turn your camera on with the shutter button and it will immediately start capturing video or time lapse. It works two ways. Here's the first way. A short press of the shutter button powers the camera on and starts recording in the last mode you are in. Then when you press it to stop recording, the GoPro shuts off. Here's the second way. If you press and hold the shutter for a few seconds when the camera is off, the camera powers on and begins recording time lapse. Then when you press it to stop recording, the GoPro shuts off. Quick capture saves time and battery power. Screen Lock Screen Lock is good to use if you don't want to change your camera settings by accident. When enabled, if you tap the screen, rather than changing something right away, you get the warning, Swipe to Unlock. Then you have to tap to unlock. It forces you to take multiple steps before you can change any settings. Grid Then we have Grid. When grid is enabled, a grid is displayed over your image. Don't worry, it doesn't record that way. The grid is just a guide to help you better frame or compose your shot. It's based on a photography rule, the rule of thirds, which suggests framing your subject off-center and placing the most important object in your shot on the lines or where the lines intersect. It's often more interesting than just sticking your subject in the middle of the frame. Front Screen Settings The next icon controls the front screen settings. Let's tap it. There are several options to choose from here. They are Full Screen. This fills the front screen, but since the front screen is square, parts of our image are cut off. It won't record that way, but for framing a shot, I want to see the entire widescreen image. So I like using the next option called Actual Screen. This shows our entire frame 
but it's smaller. Then we have status only, which displays camera status, like mode and resolution, without seeing the image that the camera sees. Finally, we have screen off. This is another option I like to use. Turning the front screen off will save power. Orientation lock. Orientation lock is next. Enable this to keep your GoPro screen image from rotating when you rotate the camera. Finally, we have max lens mode enabled. If you purchase the separately sold max lens mod, you'll need to turn this option on. Preferences. Now I'll show you some preferences. I won't go over all of them, just a few important ones. To get to preferences, swipe down on the home screen, then swipe right, then tap on preferences. There are a bunch of reset preferences if you want to reset your camera, factory reset being the most extreme one, obviously. Displays. Displays is probably a preference that you will want to modify. Here you can change orientation. Screensaver. If you want your screen to go black sooner, later, or never when the GoPro is powered on, Screensaver Rear and Screensaver Front are the settings you will want to change. If we scroll down, we will get to Brightness. This is where you can make your screen brighter or darker. This won't affect how your footage is recorded. It's helpful though, because often in harsh sunlight, you'll need the screen to be really bright. In a low light situation, you can turn the brightness down, which will most likely save battery power. 9. How to get your GoPro footage onto your computer To transfer your GoPro footage to your computer, swipe down on the GoPro touch screen, then swipe right. Tap Connections, then tap USB Connection, then select MTP, then navigate back to the home screen. Power off your GoPro. Now, using the included cable, connect it to your GoPro and then connect the other end to your computer. I'll press and hold the power mode button on the side of the camera for a few seconds to turn it on. If you have a PC, your GoPro should show up on your computer. If you have a Mac, click on the magnifying glass icon at the top right of your menu bar on your computer screen. A spotlight search pops up on screen. Type Image Capture. The Image Capture app will open and you will be able to connect to your GoPro and import your footage onto your computer using the app's controls. Another option is to just remove the micro SD card from your GoPro, put it into the adapter, and then plug the adapter directly into your computer if it has an SDXC card slot. Or you can buy a card reader. Mission accomplished. 10. Accessories The GoPro Hero 9 Black comes with a curved adhesive mount, a thumb screw, and a mounting buckle. I'll show you how to put it together. First, flip the folding fingers down into the mounting position. They are located on the bottom of the GoPro. Next, line up and interlock the folding fingers with the mounting fingers on the buckle. Then, insert and tighten the thumb screw. To attach the curved adhesive mount, flip up the mounting buckle plug. Then, slide the buckle into the mount until it clicks into place. Press the buckle plug down so it's flush with the buckle. This keeps everything locked. You can then peel off the adhesive sticker cover like a band-aid and stick the GoPro mount to a dry, flat, clean surface. GoPro recommends letting the adhesive sit 24 hours before using it. Now let's talk about additional accessories. GoPro sells a lot of great, high-quality accessories, and I highly recommend them. If you are just getting started though, and you are not sure what you need, 
you could consider purchasing a Neewer 50-in-1 accessory kit on Amazon. For around 35 bucks, you get a carrying case, a chest strap, a head strap, a wrist strap, a floating handle grip, great if you let go of your GoPro in the water, the grip floats and it will rise to the surface, a suction cup for sticking the surfaces like a windshield, a clamp, a selfie stick, a mini tripod, a wrist strap, a bicycle handlebar holder mount, adjustable pivot arm parts, several screws, two surface J-hook buckles, three curved mounts, a helmet strap, a helmet extension arm, a wrench to help tighten or loosen the screws, a flat mount, anti-fog sheets, several adhesive pads, multiple strap buckles, a pouch, and an installation guide. In addition, I purchased a GoPro tripod mount so I could attach my GoPro to my Joby Gorillapod. It's a flexible, sturdy tripod and can wrap its legs around pretty much anything. Very helpful, especially when shooting like time lapse or group shots. I hope these accessories get you thinking about how you can use your GoPro. Remember to follow the law and use your GoPro safely. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and leave comments in the comment section below.